Now, was I your dad a singer? Did no, he's sing? a five-string banjo player. Was he really? Uh, he sang, but you couldn't exactly call him a singer. <laughs> <laughs> but he he did watermelon on the vine and mm -hmm. uh, golden slippers. And he would pick them and sing them. He entertained us kids with his banjo. In fact, that was the first instrument that that uh, Ira and I used. Ira learned to play, not like Earl Scruggs plays, but just more or less frailing. Old time claw hammer? Yeah. He learned that and that's the only instrument we had and then mm -hmm. we ran into a neighbor who had a guitar and he would come with his guitar and, and the banjo and that's, that's the way we did for a while. We got away from home and won a contest in Chattanooga. You had to win three weeks, three weeks running to get the prize, and the prize was a 15-minute radio show on a little 250-watt radio station at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> and so we, time. we had a day job, call it a day job. I worked at the Peerless Woolen Mills and the Cotton Mills mm -hmm. around Chattanooga, and you'd do your shift, and then sometimes you had a show date. And uh, you go do your show, and then you come back home, get an hour or so sleep. You go up, do the little radio program, and then go to the mill and work eight hours, and then another show. And uh, but the first show that we played in uh, Jasper, Tennessee, a little place about 40 miles this side of Chattanooga, maybe 35, and we played upstairs in the courthouse at where they hold court at. And we made a hundred dollars a piece no kidding. that night, just the two of us. Uh, well, that's as much money as my my daddy could make in a month. Mm -hmm. And you were how old then? I was you fourteen. I was three years older mm -hmm. than me. But that ruined us there. We we thought that that's the a path that we wanted to. You got spoiled. Yeah. So what songs were you doing then when you went to do that gig when you were doing your radio spots? We were doing definitely the Knoxville Girl. We picked up Mary the Wild Moor when we became perf uh, more uh, commercial mm -hmm. then. But we were singing Katie Deer, Knoxville Girl, and a lot of gospel songs. At one time when we moved to Memphis, uh, we got addressed to the Lubin Brothers. Don't, not counting the Eddie Hill mail, but mail addressed to Lubin Brothers, 10,000 pieces of mail in one week. Mm -hmm. And we weren't selling nothing. It was like, sing this song, sing that song, just the old gospel songs and the stuff like Knoxville Girl was the most requested song that I and I ever sang. And that's, uh, that don't say much for, but uh, we found out people liked the song and if we didn't do it, they, somebody in the audience would get mad. Holler it out. So we started uh, doing, including that always. But, uh, it was the old songs that got the request. Mm -hmm. You could uh, do a brand new song that 20 years down the road it might be a good song, but they didn't want to hear that. They wanted to hear what they'd already, already heard you sing. So the ballads were songs that people had heard from their parents and their family, right. sure. Right. So who taught you Knoxville Girl? My, my, my mother knew the Knoxville girl, and she could sing it. Mm -hmm. She sang the Katie Deer. I'll Be All Smiles Tonight is another uh, great song. No murder in it, but... Uh, uh, no gospel in it either. Well, no, that's true. But uh, another song, uh, I Love You Best of All, which is the only positive, totally positive country song that I know mm -hmm. is ours. I think that uh, for the sake of commercialism and, and so much money, it's all about money today, uh, I think that uh, they want songs that will go to number one in the charts. Uh, folk music don't need a chart, and they never did uh, do well in charts. But there's always been that, uh, uh, even for a murder song, people will listen to it to try to figure out why this guy did it. You know, they do that with a Knoxville girl, especially. I have people all the time, why would this dirty guy do this to a girl? And I said, you didn't listen to the song good. Because in the third verse it said, 
he says, when he threw her in the river, he said, go down, go down, you Knoxville girl with a dark and roving eyes. Right. Go down, go down, Knoxville girl with a dark and roving eyes. So there's still those idiots out there that will say, if I can't have you, nobody can. So that, that causes a bunch of murders in this country simply because this guy's in love with her, but she ain't in love with him. And uh, she likes him as a friend, but not to marry. So he comes up with this great plan, you know, if I can't have you, nobody will. So he kills her. And most time, hopefully, he spends the rest of his life in prison. There's a lot of murders that's uh, caused by unattended love. And that's why these songs have been around for 300 years or more. Right? Amen. And I think that they'll always be here. Mm -hmm.